All right, welcome everyone. It is Saturday. It is a Saturday. What is it? Uh, the 14th of the month. The year is flying. We're excited. We're here. We're developing. We're shaping up good. And if you're on this call and you're not catching the replay, you're in the right room. This is what this is all about. I always talk about strength and numbers, right? But this is how we build. This is how we get together, we learn and we develop, and we take things on to the next level together. And so if you don't know who I am, I'm your co-founder and president of African American Women Trucking Association. I am Nicole Ward. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this call. Welcome to this particular time in your life that you made a decision to better yourself or join your sisters and brothers in a mission for financial literacy. So we're happy that you're in this place. I gotta always mention our leaders. Thank you to our leaders, one in particular, a lot of love that makes sure that this platform is here every Saturday. So it is here for you, okay guys? This is here for you. We care about the community and we wanna make sure that you're, you're here, that you're ed educated, you feel like you're involved and you know what's going on. So take advantage, even if you are catching the replay, uh, challenge yourself to make sure you're on one of these calls to learn, grow and develop with us. So we welcome you. Thank you for joining us. And we look, forward to you part, we look forward to you being part of our community if you're not part of our community already. So welcome. Thank you, Nicole. And so um, Kiona, let us know if you are ready to take over today, each and every Saturday here at noon Eastern, 11 Central. Uh, we have educational pieces, a way for you to interact with the community, the community to interact with you. So if you're interested in hosting one of these Saturdays, we have like a theme of the week. And so today's theme is on finances. I mean, that's that's always a theme, right? It's about where the money's at and how to make sure you're keeping it. So our uh, host today, Kiana Wright, is a accountant and she specializes in the trucking taxes and just financial wellness overall. So she's going to be guiding us in this conversation. It's totally interactive. She's going to start off kind of with, um, you know, some things to bring to mind. So it's going to be a bit presentation style in the beginning, but then we're opening it up to questions to make it more interactive. So as Nicole was saying, the key is if you're here, you're able to fully engage to get the questions answered versus watching a replay, which you know we can kind of do very passively. So just want to encourage everyone, the chat is open. We'll be monitoring the chat. Uh, feel free to raise your hand during the presentation for questions and such. And with that being said, Kiona, are you ready? I am ready. All right, you're on. Let me get ready to share my screen here. Okay, so I want to first of all say good morning. Um, happy Saturday to you all. Thanks for taking a little bit of time out your day to participate in this. Um, I love this organization for so many reasons. It's the energy, it's the environment, and it's the overall goal and mission of the organization. So if you found this organization, you know, cheers to you, right? Stick around. So I, I will be talking about... Um, one of the most important financial statements that I think most truck drivers don't understand um, the importance of. So I will go over that. But before I do, I want to give you a little bit of my background. Um, so I am Keona Wright. I am the owner of Rightway Financial Services. I specialize in taxes for truckers, but I do provide um, tax and accounting services for other industries as well. Um, I became very passionate about truckers just because Early on, pre-COVID, there were so many um, truckers being referred to me for tax and accounting services, and I realized that there was a deficit, um, lack of organization, overpayment in taxes, not understanding financial statements, the urgency and need to have financial documents um, when it comes to trying to get loans, trying to get financing from financial institutions. So I made it my business to say, you know what, I need to be a leader for the people in the financial industry and in industry as it relates to truckers. And so here I am. So today, um, let me see, I need to move this. Yeah, so we're going to talk about um, keeping the balance, the importance of the actual balance sheet. So what is a balance sheet? Um, a little bit, let me tell you a little story quickly. So 
I attended, not sure if you are aware of a company called Truck and Hustle, but I attended um, an event that they hosted, I want to say last year. And the key um, topic was, you know, making sure that your finances were in order and the balance sheet came up. And I just realized that this is one of the financial statements that a lot of truckers don't understand. Yes, you need to have your taxes prepared. Yes, you need a profit and loss statement, but this balance sheet is just as important as a profit and loss statement, if not more important. So the balance sheet basically is a financial statement. It provides a snapshot of your company's financial position at a point in time. So what exactly does that mean? It tells the investors, it tells the uh, loan officers, it tells anybody else who you're trying to seek funding from. So not just the banks, it could be government contracting. It basically tells them where your company is financially at this point in time. So it could be Q1, Q2, Q3, right? So that's what it does. It provides a snapshot of your company's financial position. I like to call it um, your, a part of your financial report card. This statement for trucking specifically is the money statement. The uh, profit and loss statement just tells us how much you made and what you spent your money on. But for the purposes of getting government funding, government contracting, this is the money financial statement. So again, like I said, it tells us three things. Um, the financial health. So it basically assesses um, all your assets. So asset management is what happens on the balance sheet. So your vehicle equipment should be on there. Um, it also tracks depreciation. So you guys should be depreciating those assets on an annual basis. Even if you uh, dispose of an asset. So when I say dispose, I mean like if you sell the asset and you no longer have it, you should be keeping track of that as well. Um, it also assists the owners of the companies. So you as the owner of your trucking business, it assists you with operational uh, replacement and upgrade. So by keeping track of these assets on the balance sheet, you will be able to determine if the asset is worth bankable bucks, right? Versus it's still being, being able to be used in a company, but it has no financial value. So what am I saying? So say you have a freight liner um, and you purchased it for $22,000. According to the IRS, that asset can be depreciated on your tax return, okay? Because there's two types of depreciation. I won't go down that rabbit hole right now because we'll be on here too long. But there's two types of depreciation. I'm specifically talking about your balance sheet, aka book depreciation. And let me check the comments because I don't, okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so what I'm talking about for right now is your book depreciation. So when you depreciate an asset on your tax return, that's considered tax depreciation. The tax depreciation component of it is simply just a tax planning strategy to help you reduce your tax debt, tax liability. Maybe you don't want to pay the IRS so much, so you want to actually depreciate that asset, truck, um, the trailer, the cab, all of those things. You want to appreciate it at a more rapid rate to take advantage of the tax deductions. But when it comes to financial health and stability, for the purposes of getting financing for getting government contracts, your balance sheet needs to track your depreciation of those assets in a different manner. So it needs to show that the, that the asset is on the books as something that you can readily get, get rid of in order to provide liquid funds. And liquid funds just simply means that it's money that you can get a hold to right away if you need it to, right? If you need to, to dissolve your business, somebody is suing you, what can you get rid of quickly um, to cover those debts and liabilities? So in the operational replacement portion, it helps the company to determine which assets should be taken out of operation. You may have a truck, and for those of you who don't have um, bookkeeping, this is another component of it, right? Making sure that you're tracking the operational replacement of your assets in the sense of, hey, I'm throwing a lot of money into this truck, but I got two other trucks that is not costing me so much for repairs. The maintenance is not so high. Insurance. So this is a way for the 
trucking company owner to determine which assets they need to displace means take out of operations is no longer operational you may want to sell it dispose of the asset because it's no longer bankable and it's no longer something that you can readily get rid of so even though it may still work well on the road it just doesn't look well as far as your balance sheet is concerned and it also helps you determine when it's time to upgrade these um these assets as well all right, let me get to it. Oh, hold on, I think it went too fast. All right, so the balance sheet also helps us to control and or manage our debt. So there's a section on the balance sheet where it's, it's called liabilities, right? So you have current liabilities, which is liabilities that you have to pay down or can get paid down within 12 months or less. And then you have long-term liabilities, which would be something that's going to take you a little bit longer than 12 months to pay off um and so again it measure it also helps to measure the equity which is what your financial position your value what you would get if the company was to close it helps to measure the owner's value in the company it also helps to measure the worth of the company so we want to make sure that we are always managing our debt again it helps to track those liabilities so such liabilities it will track lease payments and loan agreements so in relation to lease payments is not just the lease payments that you all may have with somebody else I have worked with truckers who are currently operating their own lease to own programs within their companies. Those type of programs should also be managed on the balance sheet. So the lease payment agreement should be listed on your balance sheet. It is a liability and as a person is providing payments to you, it should reduce that liability on the balance sheet because the ultimate goal is to turn over that asset to the person who is paying down um, on that on that asset because that's what the lease agreement does. Okay, well, let me. All right, so what does SBA look for when it comes to government contracting? Um, I try to talk about this so much because SBA is a really good resource for getting funding, not just for government contracts. There's all there's a, a bunch of funding out there um, for business owners and lots of funding out there for those who are in the trucking and transportation industry. So you have to look at it. Um, you have to look at it outside in. SBA looks at that balance sheet they feel like it is the most essential uh, essential financial statement to help them determine what the financial wealth and health of your company is so again they emphasize that for the contracts you have to be able to show financial stability if they look at your balance sheet and they don't and they see a negative number on the balance sheet that shows them that you have poor financial management and that there's a possibility that you won't be able to sustain the contracts once you get them. So if you have been in the government contracting space or interested in the government contracting space, um, a word of advice. So you get into the contracting space, which is awesome, right? You're qualified, you have the correct balance sheets, but you also need to have some other stable income coming into the business because those contracts may or may not pay out for 30 to 45 days. And I'm sure you guys are familiar with factoring companies. So you can use factoring companies to help um, speed up the payout on these contracts with the government. However, you still need to be able to show some type of financial stability. We always have to plan for the what ifs and the balance sheet helps determine whether you have um, the volume to do so. So we don't want the va uh, the balance sheet to show any negative numbers. And that includes, um, for those of you who are LLC operators and you're paying yourself via Zelle <laughs> payments, which we should not be doing, right? Um, that's a whole nother conversation. You actually should be not sending Zelle payments, but writing checks from yourself to your personal account because that shows a uh, a record 
It is a paper trail that they can trace. And it also is the proof that you'll need in the event that you get audited by IRS. And it will help to explain why all of these transactions are happening in your bank account in the event that you do need to apply for loans and funding, not just with the government, but at a local bank. All right. So why is the balance sheet so important in the trucking and transportation industry it is extremely indispensable for trucking and transportation businesses right um it gives the overall insight to uh, like i said before debt levels financial stability it helps the owners of the company to make informed decisions it helps you to manage your finances it helps to plan and prepare for future things to come. So if you decide that you wanna purchase another truck, you wanna get into a, a different season, right? Cause we have um, farming season, we have uh, seasons where we're hauling fruits and vegetables. So all of those type of things, you need you need to look at your balance sheet, not the profit and loss statement, not your cash flow statement. You need to look at your balance sheet to be able to determine if you can increase your bandwidth, right? So if we wanna add some more, assets to it so if we want to get like you, you might want to pick up a hot shot and do box truck the balance sheet is going to tell you if you have the bandwidth to do so the most the biggest error i see on the balance sheet is most of the times when we have owners who are taking funds out of the company and just not managing that you'll be able to see how much money you're actually selling yourself and taking out through that balance sheet because it should be reported on the balance sheet as owners um equity owners draw those are the things that you should be looking for on that balance sheet all right so items that you should be putting on the balance sheet again trucks tractors trailers your ap units um commercial property real estate so if you are a truck driver who owns a a parking lot that should be on your balance sheet if you have a garage that you um rent out to other people or you park your own trucks in that should be on the balance sheet again your lease agreements should be on your balance sheet payments received loans from the bank loans from friends i put that on there as well because that lets you know who all you have to pay back it'll help you devise a plan on how soon you can get rid of this right because we want to have a healthy balance sheet has more short-term liabilities and less long-term liabilities. Healthy long-term liabilities are loans from bank institutions, uh, loans from SBA. Those are healthy long-term liabilities. So just like your personal credit, um, this balance sheet helps out sort of kind of like with business credit because you need to have a healthy balance. So you can't have a whole bunch of short term liabilities again the things that will pay off within 12 months or less and then have a, a short list one or two items for long term liability so they need to know that you manage your money well and that you are financially fit so i'll show you a sample balance sheet i hope it pulled up everything all right so i think this is just the top part so this is actually an unhealthy balance sheet so we have um accounts receivables again those are invoices that somebody owes you what is considered a uh, accounts receivable for trucking would be factoring invoices right so invoices that are just sitting out there that you guys are not um taking in consideration to see if they're being paid out i cannot stress enough that is one area to where i am helping truckers find money that they have not actually gotten back from outstanding invoices due to factoring companies. So make sure that you guys are managing those um, factoring invoices. We got short-term loans of $2,000, current liabilities, again, of $3,500, long-term loans of 8,000, total current assets of 15,000. So does this may not look like, um, I want to loan you some money because you only got fifteen thousand dollars worth of current assets and if you're coming to me asking me for fifteen thousand or more there's no guarantee that i'm going to be able to recover my funds from you because all you have is fifteen thousand dollars worth of current assets and again things that you can readily get rid of in order to pay me back i need to be able to ensure that the person i'm doing business with 
can be able to pay back the money that they're asking me for. So a good cushion is to have at least ten to fifteen thousand dollars more in your current assets than you are asking for. All right, so um, the errors in that balance sheet again. I don't expect you guys to know this, but there there can be errors in the balance sheet, and it simply happens most times. I find when you are self doing your bookkeeping, um, so it's very important to either hire a bookkeeper. You can hire them, retain them for the year. You can re, uh, go reach out to somebody who will help you on a quarterly basis. Um, whatever your financial situation is, I strongly advise that you get with a bookkeeper. Um, for those of you who have spouses who are helping you in the office to run the back end with the paperwork, invest in getting them enrolled in a bookkeeping course if there's something that they're willing to do. Um, there are organizations that provide full suite free bookkeeping training. If that's something you're interested in, um, please let me know and I, got, I can send you guys the link to register for those things. So the retained earnings wasn't calculated correctly in that prior balance sheet. Um, a correct balance sheet should make sure that assets and liabilities should always match. So there shouldn't be a variance or a difference between the two. Uh, we want So the total assets for this company, again, my spreadsheet got cut off. I'll, Lada, I'll send you the updated slides if you need to send them to somebody. Um, but this company actually had total current assets of $21,500. That tells me as an investor, like, hey, okay, you have a little money. I wouldn't mind loaning you $10,000 because you have more than enough for me to take from you. So that's how they say it. In order to make sure that I can get my money back. So you always want to make sure that you guys are not only understanding the financial statements, right? You need to know what position your company is in most times trucking companies don't survive because we don't know the numbers i'm not expecting for you guys to be accountants i'm not expecting for you to be bookkeepers but if you are working with somebody which they should be a part of your team you should be checking in with them each quarter and ask them what is my company worth how long can i keep the doors open because we do know that the rates were low at some time and a lot of companies shut down, went on pause to go work for other trucking and transportation companies as employees or last on as independent contractors because they were not tracking the numbers. And this will help you determine what moves you need to make before the doors close. We don't wanna start looking for straws, grabbing their straws once the money gets down to zero or we can't afford to cover our liabilities. All right, so balance, I have a couple of tips for you guys for balance sheets um, so that you can make sure that you have one. And again, everybody should have one. So when you are getting your taxes prepared, the person who is doing your taxes should ask you for two financial statements. They should ask you for your profit and loss statement, again, which is just a summary of the total income that you brought into the company and a complete itemized list of all your expenses that will show the money going out of the company. Uh, a couple of things that I noticed on a profit and loss statement, for those of you who have owed the IRS in the past, the payments that you make to the IRS and or your state and local government, those payments are actually not tax deductible. So make sure that you understand that um, it's a tax debt and even though the company you're paying, you should be paying that tax debt through your company's bank account, it is not a tax deductible expense um, on your tax return. Another thing I noticed um, before I get into these tips is tracking per diem. So there is a way you can track per diem, make sure your tax professionals, CPAs, provide you with a spreadsheet so that you guys can successfully track per diem to make sure that you are maximizing that deduction as well. A good rule of thumb to help you with that is to actually use your if the statements that you guys hand in if you are OTR to help create that spreadsheet to properly calculate um, what your per diem amounts are and then for those of you who do not go across state lines you guys unfortunately are not eligible for per diem i don't make the rules i just explain them 
<laughs> All right, so balance sheet tips, invest in a bookkeeping software, invest in a bookkeeper. Um, make sure you guys are taking the trainings. If you want to self-manage your books, make sure that you are um, paying attention to what goes on the balance sheet, what doesn't go on the balance sheet. Most times these are journal entries that need to be made so that those entries can transfer to the balance sheet. The balance sheet stuff has nothing to do with the import from your actual bank statement. So that's why I'm strongly suggesting that you get uh, with the bookkeeper. Again, go over these types of things with your CPAs and accountants to make sure that your balance sheet um, shows a positive number at the end. Give the bookkeeping uh, person or the accountant a list of all your assets, the cost of those items, and the dates of purchase. If you are financing items, they need to know the, uh, the finance terms too. So you want to make sure that you're providing them with all of the information. One, again, it helps to provide a healthy balance sheet. Two, it helps to provide uh, the correct numbers when you guys are preparing your tax returns because you do want to take depreciation for those assets. So you want to make sure that you're tracking the depreciation and the cost of those assets in real time. Before applying for loans and government contracts, please review your balance sheets to make sure that they are up to date. So a lot of times um, truck drivers will have a truck that's out of commission, they may decide to sell the truck, um, they may purchase additional equipment, you want to make sure that those things are being updated on your balance sheet in real time, um, just so that you can show that your company is worth uh the correct amount of money that you're showing before you apply and again be able to explain any changes in the value and depreciation of the assets that may pop up on the balance sheet that show differently on the actual tax return i cannot stress enough um depreciation for tax purposes again is a tax planning strategy where, whereas the balance sheet depreciation you want to make sure that you are doing it on a straight line method which is equal payments of depreciation over the useful life, which is how long the IRS deems your asset to be worth something. So most equipment for truckers, um, the trucks 13,000 pounds or more, you can depreciate over five years. Um, the trailers, the tractors, not the trailers, the tractors is a three year depreciation method. So again, if you accelerate your depreciation for tax purposes, just be able to explain that when you guys are going to um, apply for government loans and contracts. I'll pause for one second to see if you guys have any questions. All right, no, no, nothing yet. Okay. Nothing yet, we're good. Okay, all right. I think I'm almost at the end here. Okay, so what am I offering? So my firm is actually doing financial diagnostic for trucking companies now. I am not trying to steal you from your CPA. However, I do work with a handful of CPAs to help make sure that um, their clients are maximizing their deductions, making sure that they are financially fit for government contracts, loans from banks. Um, you guys know that some of these off-brand trucking companies expect for you to start paying them back next week, next month. And so we just look over all of your financial documents. Um, we try to find hidden savings. We help you work with your CPA and or accountant to maximize tax deductions and also make sure that you guys are IRS compliant. One of the major things that is on the IRS's dirty dozens, which is their list of scams for the year, is that fuel tax credit. So what my firm does is we go through those statements to ensure that you guys who are eligible for fuel tax credit rightfully claim it uh, without getting audited by the IRS. So if that is something that you're interested in, uh, we are running a special. Um, it's $4.99, and we guarantee that we'll find you at least $1,000 in savings, or you get your $4.99 back. So uh, we are confident that we can help you find those savings. So we are offering it um, to this group, right? And if you catch it on a replay for a healthy discounted price of $4.99, you can scan the QR code if you're interested. If you would like to share it with a friend, please make sure that you um, get in contact with me and say, hey, um, I'm not interested, but I know somebody else who may be interested. And that's it, Lada. I'm done. 
look like a pro. <laughs> can you uh can you drop that link in yep, the chat too? Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys, lots of information. Again, if you're probably like me and numbers only make sense when they hit that bank account <laughs> and everything else is like, okay, if you say so, um, please know that the replay is available. It's going to be sent to the email that you registered for. So make sure you're checking that email in particular. Um, we're going into our Q&A session as well as introductions of everyone who has made it here. We want to make this as interactive as possible. That's the, the added part for you being here versus watching the replay. So we're going to go into that in just a few moments. But I just want to first of all say, Kiona, thank you for that wealth of information. I mean, she's very thorough. If you didn't pick that up already, she will go through your financial situation on an individualized, not template-like template uh, way and she'll help you better understand how you're operating, which is really the, the core of all this. It's one thing to kind of hand it off to somebody else, but a whole nother thing that we encourage strongly for you to be able to understand it for yourself. So with that being said, let's go ahead to um, questions. If you have some questions, feel free to come off mic, ask them direct, you can put them into the chat if you want it shared that way, but um, let's open it up for questions. And I have one in particular, if no one else is going to go just yet. So we're just going to... It could be any financial question. It just doesn't have to be on the topic for today. Um, so just let me know if you guys have some questions. I'm here to answer. Excellent. Go ahead, Nicole. Well, I wanted to say that was some useful information. Um, I no longer have trucks up and running, but I can tell you when I was operating, uh, you know, um, as a carrier, some of this information would have made sure I probably was still in business. I'm just being honest, right? We got to be honest. That's what we're on this call for. And I'll never forget, um, I, you know, as I was getting into this business and trying to understand what is the best way to keep track of my expenses, I just, you know, I was trying to gain, hence the reason Auto was born, right? Because we needed these type of resources and I couldn't find these type of centralized lanes that were, you know, to, to be able to promote financial literacy. Um, and I think that's where a lot of us struggle. I, I literally watched a YouTube where ladies like, I'm just going to grab some loads and we're going to see what the numbers look like at the end of the week. And I'm like, oh man. Mm -hmm. So we know what's going on in the back behind them with her finances. So mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you for that. I really hope that helped uh, somebody that's currently in business, right? That didn't have to suffer some of the financial losses I personally had to suffer um, before Ada existed. So uh, one team, one dream. This was awesome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, definitely. I try to, Go I ahead. Try to, um, so I have a lot of drivers that come to me that are new in the space. And so um, we do offer another service to where we help you position in the beginning for financial greatness so that you don't have to be, you know, a one hit wonder in the trucking mm -hmm. space. And it's just okay. making sure that your finances are in order before you say, look, I'm going to get my own DOT. That's I'm right. going to get my own this. Um, it's not just buying the truck because, you know, that's an awesome commitment and it's an awesome um, Agenda, you yeah. know, thing to do. But however, it's very important to make sure that you have an escrow account of your own. So uh -huh. in case something happens, you don't have to say, oh, now I got to go work a job because I need a new tire or the engine mm -hmm. or about a limit. You will have an account with the money in it already to to be able to um, keep that truck on the road. Yes, keep people in business. Team yes, Auto, yes. let's go. <laughs> yes, yes. That, that was my question, actually, uh, right out out of my head um, for new people because that's often the challenge. You're just getting started, so you don't really know what numbers to expect as well as what numbers to prepare for, because um, those are actually two different scenarios. Can you give um, some more advice? You, you kind of hit on that you have a program on here, but if you would just kind of give some tips so people who are like even contemplating this or might just be like, oh, wow, this is much, um, can be encouraged to know that this, just like all businesses, it requires planning. Um, you know, capital is one thing, but planning is actually something that's going to make sure you can keep access to capital as well as keep the capital that you have. So can you share some um, newbie tips for us? Yeah, so I definitely think um, that everybody should have their own uh, escrow account. And then 
first, you know, don't be so quick to just invest all your money. I know some people that are like me and I, I maxed out my 401k or my pension plan to start this trucking business. So if it don't work out, you know, I don't have anything. Look into opportunities to where you can use other people's money first, right? Get See if you can get investors, see if you can get startup loans, startup funding. Again, SBA is a wonderful resource. The other thing is really sitting down and I know people talk about budgets all the time, but I'm talking about budgeting all the way down to that bag of chips that you like to buy from the gas station every day right because um every penny that comes out is a penny that needs to be earned so for me i love dunkin donuts tea and i buy a box every two weeks it's seven dollars and 95 cent okay and so Things like that. If you love Starbucks, I'm not telling you that you have to stop, you know, because some people say, oh, you got to sacrifice. You don't have to sacrifice if you properly plan and properly planning is being realistic about your monthly expenses and then being realistic about things that could possibly come up. So you have homeowners. Um, what happens if, you know, your furnace so happens to go out? Do you have did you budget for that? Did you plan for that? Um, what happens if you get on the road and the tire blows out? Did you budget for that? Do you have access to roadside assistance? What is it going to take for, you know, how much is a tow going to cost? Um, what does that look like if you can't get that load there on time? You know, so again, budget for all of those things. Be a real, be realistic in your goals. Know that in the beginning, you're not going to see a, a good ROI. The thing is to make sure that you have a steady flow. So if you are, what I'm saying is if you're, if you're able to break even, then that's a great steady flow. Then the goal for next quarter should be is, okay, I'm breaking even every month. I'm paying my bills. I'm keeping the truck on the road. Now it's time to increase those finances. So don't be so quick to um, think that just because you got a truck and you're booking loads that you're going to you know, be able to keep all the money that you make. And that creates stress. So we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to set realistic financial goals, look at our personal, you know, finances, because that's what's going to help you determine what extra money you need to, um, to make right out on the road. And then, you know, again, throw in like, hey, I like to go out of town. I like to go on vacations. I like to go on cruises. What does that look like? I want to hire another driver. What does that look like? when can you hire another driver at what um point in your business so net profit i always ask people i don't care what your gross do i want to know what the net does what net amount of income do you need to say hey it's i can hire another driver so that's what they should be looking for again realistic goals budgeting um setting at least to start out at least fifteen thousand in an account before you decide to just jump on that road at least fifteen thousand absolutely this this was wow such a gem I, I was reading the comments also know you guys that the comments are kind of internal so if you're watching this on the replay you're not getting the benefit of seeing the comments but the comment section is on, on fire with some great tips and such so as we get ready to go into um this networking portion which is really what we're here for to learn and connect uh, through Ada and through the people who are part of Ada, because that's really what Ada represents. Um, kind of remember that in saying it for the replay, if you would just kind of mention it, if you're able to do that as part of your introduction. But thank you so much once again, Kiona. Thank you for being a member, always adding value to the community and just, you know, breaking it down realistically, right? Um, we can hear a lot of hype, in other places and one of the things that i like to always remind people is your numbers don't look like your friends numbers yes. you know you are not your friend it's not duplicatable in that way even with a great mentorship program you're going to have different um different ways of handling it different priorities um different lifestyles than someone else and just those are, are all important when you're encompassing your numbers so just keep that in mind. You want more of an um, advisor such as Kiona, such as, as she said, anybody that you trust to give you that sound advice, but just make sure it's sound advice with you in mind. So um, 
with that being said, I'm going to yield back to Nicole so she could uh, introduce our leadership team and then we'll go right in. We'll kind of call you if you're available to come on mic to share about your business. So maybe you can be connecting to a strong financial partner such as Kiona or others that you're going to hear in the room that bring a lot of value to our trucking industry. Nicole? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for tossing it my way, Ms. Lada. First and foremost, Kiana, that was amazing. Hopefully you caught it live and in person and not on the replay. Because again, like Lada said, you missed the comments and that was great information, great feedback and just good support all in all. So uh, thank you all for spending your time with us, learning, educating and growing forward with our community. Woo woo, one team, one dream. Let's see who's on the line. Um, first and foremost, always got to shout out our loyal and amazing director of our community um, engagement here at Ada. And so we thank you, Lada Love Hawkins, for being an amazing director of our community engagement committee. We couldn't uh, do things and have platforms just like this without you. All right. So make sure you love on her, guys, and show her some special love as she cares about our education and the growth of our community. Uh, next, I see some other members here. We got Carissa, Garrett, Natasha, whoop, whoop, Kiona. Yes, Team Ada, come through. We have uh, Natasha Jones, which is the director of our mental health and wellness here at Ada Leadership. And then we have more leadership here on the line that I just mentioned, and I appreciate you. But uh, we'll go ahead and talk with Natasha so she could talk a little bit about what she does with Ada. Um, as well as what she does with 18 HD screening and laboratory. Awesome. Natasha, are you able to come on camera? I can talk. Oh, well, okay. that works too. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Natasha Jones, CEO of HD Screening and Laboratory. I'm also the Director of Mental Health and Wellness for Ada. And we provide DOT medical compliance, which is your drug testing and alcohol testing program. We also do uh, policies. We also do lab work, physicals um, at very, very affordable rates. Um, we are also developing initiatives for the trucking industry. So um, stay tuned for those because that's going to be very, very, very important for people to, um, you know, sign petitions, get on to different things that we're doing for Ada. So please spread the word because it's coming sooner than later. Um, secondly, um, we're gonna be on this week with Kiona. We're gonna be talking about um, medical and financial tips. So don't miss that webinar. Um, and lastly, uh, we also have a corporate program where we help you if you're developing your business to go public or you wanna sell one day, um, a corporate social responsibility program that we have um, developed that framework that will help you get uh, more information on that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natasha. I appreciate your leadership as well as all that you contribute to the community. Um, I will introduce somebody that a lot of introduce, and I'm sure she wanted to introduce, but I'm super excited um, about uh, just because of how incredible they are and how much energy they come with. And that's Garrett. <laughs> hey! 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 <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a lot of wind. Uh, so I actually managed to catch y'all while I was going to the gym. I'm going to come on camera. I just stepped outside so you don't hear all this bump and techno from the inside of the Planet Fitness. Hey! You are so dedicated to your health. You are at the gym and on this call. Team Otto, let's right. go! Let's go! Hey. <laughs> Great job. Go ahead, Garrett. Yeah, so a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Garrett Steenblick. Uh, I come from the federal contracting trucking space. I've been doing high security trucking for the last five years. And I lost 200 pounds while driving a, uh, a truck cross country. And uh, like Natasha, I care a great deal about wellness and trucking. Uh, trucking gave me everything I have relationship with my family, financial freedom, my health, and my mental wellness. It's really served as like this boot camp and a place to incubate and grow my life. So for me, giving back to trucking is very important. And right now, uh, working inside of uh, a company that I've created called Trucker's Body Shop, 
and uh, we just done our soft launch. We started conducting beta testing. But what we're doing is we're providing accessibility uh, to truck drivers to get uh, weight loss medications, or hair loss medications, testosterone, hormone therapy, uh, birth control medications in the future, um, a whole litany of different medications delivered and available to truck drivers on their schedule at generic and affordable rates. Because there's a there's a major lack of accessibility. Um, and there's a major problem with health in trucking because the way that Natasha can attest to this, the way that most trucking companies have gone about implementing wellness into trucking is by saying, hey bro, eat a banana instead. Put down the cheeseburger. And that doesn't really work when somebody works 40 uh, like 40 hours in just four days, right? The average person works 40 hours in a week. You're talking someone who works 10, 14 hour days every single week. They don't have the willpower to overcome all the adversity they face and make healthy decisions. But providing accessibility to medical therapies that can, for example, take willpower out of the equation, I view as essential. It's basically a human right. Because at this point, the majority of truck drivers have 16 years less, less of a life expectancy, sorry, than the average American. And they work almost twice as long every single week. So it's freaking crazy that our entire economy is being carried on the backs of people who are working twice as long and living more than a decade less than everyone else. So my goal is to do something about it. And uh, that's it. I'm happy to be here. You gave a great presentation. I love the way that you've gone about everything. It's super important because when you become a business owner, that is, it, that is your child. And just like having a baby, there's so much you find out you don't know about yourself, you don't know about life, and you don't know about what you need to do. And so you're you're offering an essential service, Kiana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations on your uh, weight loss journey and success. And yes, we need more of you guys out here to help these truckers stay fit. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. But we need more people like you, too, who are able to help truckers ensure that they have complete control over scaling their operations. Because a lot of people come into this and they're at mercy of variables. That's what business is all about. Variables that they either haven't anticipated or haven't prepared for and they're taken out of the game very quickly and left with some pretty rough consequences as a result. Hmm. Garrett, I thank you, and I, I thank you, Kiona, and you both, um, and uh, Natasha, for your dedication to health and wellness commitment uh, in our industry. It's something that we can't play around with, because I said, uh, like I always say, our wealth is our health, right? Uh, and without our health, we can't even make one dollar. So this right here, uh, I appreciate each and every one of you for your dedication to making sure our community is healthy uh, while on the road. Thank you. Last but not least that, that I want to introduce, um, who's been amazing and instrumental just to our journey and has even been one of our guest speakers before. We got to get her back on, but she's real good, y'all. She's real good. And that is Carissa Carter. Girl, thank you for rocking with us. Please come on camera if you can and introduce yourself. And thank you for being amazing and being part of this community. Carissa, are you there? I am. Good Yay. afternoon, Nicole. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Saturday. I do want to say, Kiana, that was awesome. Girl, I wish I would have met you about 13 years ago before I got started and had all of those questions. But yes, that was an amazing, um, amazing presentation. I want to thank you all for this platform. I don't know how many times I've said that to Nicole and Lada, um, because like <laughs> I've been doing this for 25 years. I am an intermodal trucking agent out of Charleston, South Carolina. So we work out of the Charleston ports. Um, 
I've been my own agent for 13 years. I've started off at OOCL and was dispatching. I'm there dispatching two carriers from OOCL for like the first year. Then I went and opened up about, um, I think the last time I counted, I opened up four different terminals in, uh, in or around Charleston for different companies before I was able to open my, open one for myself. So God is good all the time. And we do know that. And so once I saw the advertisement for African-American Women Trucking Association, I was so excited. I was like, wow, because I felt like I was alone on an island for a long time. And we do know, you know, it's an open group for everyone, but it's also nice to be able to be, um, you know, to be a part of a group with like-minded people. And so I do want to, every time I get a chance to thank Nicole for her vision and to thank her for, um, like I said, the platform, I do want to say thank you, but here I am. Okay. I had to get moved and see how bad my hair looks, but um, I am Carissa, you guys. And it is very, very good to be here. And like I said, Intermodal Trucking Agent out of Charleston. I also founded the Charleston Trucking Expo. Um, so that was a blessing. Um, we have had two successful expos here in Charleston. We just wanted to get the community together, you know, like the, so that we could provide speakers and answer questions for those that were already in the industry, um, as well as those who were looking to get into the industry. So Kiana, just so you know, you'll be hearing for, from us, girl, to see if we can't get you um, on that stage. I'm hoping to bring Let it to know. Atlanta. Yes, ma'am. I'm hoping to bring it to Atlanta and Charlotte and Dallas. So we are excited about, you know, like what, what's going on in the industry. Even though freight is up and down, you know, we still want to stay positive and encourage each at each and every one of you all, if there's anything that I can do to help, assist, answer any questions, I would be more than happy to. I can't wait to get back to hot ATL so that I can see, um, meet you all in person that are down there. And of course, I got to get to Dallas or get Lada up here to South Carolina too, because I, I can't can't wait to to actually put our faces together and um, put our minds together because just the collaboration we've had so far has been awesome. So I look forward to um, communing with all you guys. Like I said, if there's anything I can ever do to be um, of assistance, please reach out and let me know. I will drop my contact information in the chat and enjoy you all's weekend and have a great have a great week, guys. Carissa, yeah. don't Carissa, don't leave out the Midwest now. We got some truckers up here too now. Don't leave us <laughs> no, out. I, that, that's <laughs> right. That, that, you, you heard that right. I, I will definitely not leave out the Midwest. So we're, we're going to be all over the U.S. One day, okay. hopefully, uh, in the next few years, we're going to be as big as Matt's, y'all. I we're know coming. that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> Say it again. Carissa, you are love it. Cool. You are a gem and Otta. You're incredible. Your your education and your insight is absolutely amazing. And we are so happy and honored to have you as a, a member here. So thank you so much for all that you contribute and all that you do. One team, one dream. Let's go. All right. So those were some of Let's our go. Right? Let's go. Our members and our OG leadership. But guess what? Otta's growing, y'all. And we're excited about growing. We have new members joining every single day. And I love when new members turn into leaders. But I wanted to mention somebody that's new to Ada. I haven't had a chance to physically meet you, young lady, but I've heard a lot about you. And I'm excited to welcome you to our community. So LaShondra Houston, are you able to join the line? Woohoo! Thank, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> I appreciate that. I was not expecting that introduction. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Tell um, us about you and your business. Yes. So I'm LaShonda Houston. I'm based out of Atlanta. Well, I'm about 30 minutes outside of Atlanta in Conyers. But I am an HR professional by trade. And so what I do is I help small transportation and logistics companies with HR solutions, whether they need on-demand support to deal with emergency situations, or they want to take a more proactive uh, approach and meet monthly, whether it's one hour or four hours a month to talk about employee retention, company culture, policy development. So I am here to really help organizations focus on what they do best, 
while I support the greatest asset of their business, which is their people. Thank you so much. I, welcome again. And you in ATL. So uh, we expect to see you at the next events, right? All the Atlanta events, right? All the yes, Atlanta events. Yes, yes. All right, <laughs> let's go. I love it. I love it. Well, welcome again. And now we're going to open it up to non-members. Introduce yourselves. Please don't be shy. We would love to see your faces. Obviously, cameras are optional. Um, but if you know anything about me, I'm always on camera. So <laughs> anytime, any place, I love the show my face, I love energy, and this is what this is all about, guys, so don't feel shy. Um, come off camera and let us know, sorry about that, sorry about that, come off camera and let us know who you are and what you do, um, and uh, yeah, a little bit about you. Don't be shy. Lotta, do you want to start picking them off? <laughs> yeah, I will. Look, <laughs> is that Lloyd? Lloyd, are you the Zoom user? I can't, my eyes are bad today with this little bit of camera. Lloyd, are you available? Or Zoom user is how we have the person listed. If you want to come on off um, off mute, there we go. We love to um, hear about you. If you're not available, feel free to also add your contact information. And this goes for anyone in the chat. And then I see a Cy Smith. Am I pronouncing it right? S.Y. Smith, did you want to come and introduce yourself for the replay? The chat is not um, available for the replay. Would you like to do an intro? Good morning. Um, I guess I'll speak for, for myself and for Lloyd. He is a flatbed driver who has and is building with multiple flatbed trucks. And I'm working with him to possibly go into dispatching. So I'm here to listen. I'm here to, to learn. I guess I can turn my camera on. I'm getting ready to go walk. So. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. So look, you're the power driver. <laughs> look, Lloyd, <laughs> probably like, what? He's on camera, he's probably, too. He's probably working. He's nine times out of ten. If uh, he's on his phone, he's probably tying down the flatbed and uh, making, hitting those miles. So, Absolutely. If you would, um, if you don't mind as well, sharing his uh, YouTube um, link in okay. the chat. Um, I know that's something he wants to kind of get more out there so you guys can see what the work looks like and like for real, for real, right? But thank okay. you for coming on. And if you have any questions and continued um fellowship with us. You can join us at that Facebook group, which is a public group now, as well as just uh, connecting as we have events um, launching off, as you heard, in Atlanta, in Dallas. We're moving to the Carolinas. We're going to be out there in Chi-Town, too. was trying to get Wanda to help me um, get some things coordinated to Kiona. So we're coming to a city near you. But thank you for being on this call and look forward to knowing more about you and your journey. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, our next person here is Ashlyn Griffin. Ashlyn, if you're available to come on mic or camera, we'd love to hear more about you. Can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Um, I'm a truck driver, too. I'm actually a driver right now. I'm here. Um, Lloyd sent me the link, so I'm just here to listen. Well, awesome. Look, Lloyd doing the behind the scenes work. So thank you for joining. Please be safe. We want to make sure we keep you um, at top of mind in your safety. Thank you for listening in. We'll make sure that we have your contact information, the email you registered so we can share the entire replay and also invite you to our future events as you're able to come on and, and join us virtually as well as in person. But thank you, Ashton, for what you're doing for the um, industry, you know, being out there, the feet, uh, to the pedal, you know, and um, we, we are always mindful that the driver actually runs the industry. So thank you. We have Preston, Preston Charrington. Are you available to come on mic? Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Yes, uh, I have a small company. 
Um, I'm also a driver as well. So uh, Lloyd also invited me as well. So I'm here to listen and learn as well. Well, look at Lloyd. He just on fire. He just told me he getting his hair did. So <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you for um, you know doing the work of getting everyone together because that is the work as well. But thank you for joining us, Preston. We look forward to learning more about you. Ada is for the celebration of African American women in trucking, but men um, and everybody really is welcome to celebrate with us. So um, hopefully you'll consider that in future interactions. And thank you for being here today. Chantel, Chantel Harge, are you available to come on mic? Oh, excuse me, hello. Hello, welcome. So I just joined in. So are you, are you asking for, I'm not sure what, what the question is. Oh, no worries. Uh, we, we're actually kind of closing off here and we're just doing our oh. introductions in our networking. Just uh, tell us a little bit about you, what you're looking to learn here in the trucking industry. We're all ears. Um, so I am, my name is Chantel. I am a truck driver. I am the wife of Preston that just introduced himself and I run his back office. Um, I've been in trucking since 2018, and I absolutely love it. Oh, that's awesome. I love hearing about families that are in this together. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your support of your husband, of the industry, because look, it's an all-in venture, is it not? <laughs> um, many people who come into the industry um, are either friends, relatives, or just lucky, um, you know, I call them, sometimes I call them punching bags because that's what it feels like sometimes. But, you know, the trusted advisors to the drivers, to the back office people supporting the industry. Uh, myself, I support the industry. My brother-in-law is, uh, well, was an over-the-road driver. Um, family has caused him now to be more of a local courier driver. But, you know, I've I've seen firsthand just kind of the impact of his being over the road had on the family. And then as my sister and I got more involved in the trucking ourselves, I see how just all the different aspects of the business side, as well as the, um, the functional and operational side need to come together in forums so that everyone can be educated on what we're all doing because it's all connected. So I thank you for your support. Looking forward to um, getting to know you and your husband's business more and hoping, hoping to share that story with um, our community too. All right, so with that being said, we um, are trying to keep it tight within the hour. We had a lot of education. We've got um, this available as the replay. It'll be shared upon the email that you registered for the link in. So you can go back, digest it, and share it with others that you care about as well. But we want to thank you um, for being part of our Saturday sessions. Next week, we'll be talking about personal and career development in the uh, space. We're actually going to be, um, our host is Jonique Taylor, and she's going to talk about the trucking skills that pay the bills. And it's not just your CDL. So um, if that is a topic of interest, how to be able to really diversify in this industry, please make sure you're coming in at the same time, same place here virtually, noon Eastern, 11 Central. And joining us, also the Facebook group is a, um, a great place to share your business, share uh, your experiences and stories, and invite others that are maybe uh, more curious about what's going on in the trucking industry. And last but not least, make sure you're checking our website, AWTA.org. So A-A-W-T-A dot O-R-G. We just dropped that in the chat, too. I just wanted to be sure to say it because, like I said, the chat is not um, available on uh, the replay, but Ada.org, as I screen share here, we have a marketplace, so you're able to uh, share your business that way. We have blogs, we have educational um, opportunities, and so if you would like to host, reach out to me at Lada, at Ada.org. Um, but we look forward to just having many different ways, many different opportunities to continue to network and grow together. Thank you, everyone. And we'll catch you again later. Have a good one.
Have a great one, everyone. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you so much. If you didn't get a chance to drop your link, um, I'm just staying open until you guys would like. You can drop your link here.